everybody, I'm Adriana and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be chatting with you guys today and today we are finally going to be sharing my testimony and college experience with you guys. These two stories are so interwoven that I really can't talk about one without the other and they both I think are a great testimony of how good our God is and the amazing things that happen when we relinquish control unto him and we kind of die to self and be vulnerable and put down our pride. So I figured I would talk about both of them with you guys today especially because I just graduated college so what a better time to talk about the whole experience and then have my testimony all wrapped up in there just to kind of let you guys get to know where I'm coming from a little better because I feel like I mention it so much in um, my Bible study with me videos but I never really want to go that deep into it because then it would be like mega long so with that I don't know how long this video is gonna be hopefully it's not nine years long um, we had to give our testimonies at retreat um, in my sorority for like every retreat so I feel like I've gotten pretty good at condensing it but because I'm trying to go through like the whole college experience and also like talk about that it might be a minute so get comfy because we're about to chat <laughs> so pretty much I'm gonna lay some groundwork down for you guys four years is a lot to cover so bear with me but it's okay we're only really gonna talk about two and then the other two are just like ooh, God is so good so um, yes so a couple the groundwork the groundwork here um, before we get in to coming into UF by the way I am a University of Florida graduate so I did graduate from the University of Florida if you did not tell by the thumbnail but um, so before coming into college I had graduated high school um, I was 20th in my class I was super on top of my grades never failed a class I would cry if I got a B um, super super dedicated and um, I got my associate's degree from my state college literally weeks before I even graduated high school so I was very much on top of myself like not a slacker um and so there was that I was a Christian and I believe that the Bible was true and I believe that Jesus died and rose again and defeated sin and death to save us so I consider myself a Christian but I hadn't actually had a relationship with the Lord yet let alone had I relinquished myself unto him and said like you can have me like I am yours um which is much easier said than done and so we'll get into that so that's where I was there I had a boyfriend leaving high school who was not a believer um and we'll get into that too and um I really wanted to join a sorority which kind of has to do with the um which kind of has to do with the rest of the story too and then at this point my parents were getting a divorce and my two best friends were a year younger than me and so they were still going to be in high school when I was going off into college. I also wanted to be a doctor. I knew that I wanted to be a doctor my whole life. Um, if you guys are have been around my channel before you've probably heard me say it before but like I just I knew I wanted to be a doctor when I was super little like a little kid. Um, I had an ear infection and I had accurately diagnosed myself and my doctor was like oh my goodness you should totally be a doctor and I super internalized that. Um, so that um, in a mix with you really only hear of doctor, lawyer, teacher, policeman, firefighter, etc, etc. When you're in school as like the only careers and those are like the only things that are ever mentioned. Um, and so I was like, yeah, I would love to be a doctor. I've always like loved blood and guts and stuff like that. I would have watched Dr. Miami on Snapchat and I knew that I was really fascinated by birth. So I specifically wanted to be a gynecologist obstetrician and I really wanted to help people deliver babies. That was something that I was super excited about. And to this day, I want to deliver somebody's baby. I don't know how, but I would like to. Um, anyways, so that is part of the story too. And so I came to the University of Florida as a health science major. And so when I came to orientation, we were all sitting in a group with all of the people in my college. And they were like, how many of you want to go to medical school? Blah, 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 blah. How many of you want to be on like the um, business side of medicine? Blah, 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 blah. And um, they were talking about the class chemistry because chemistry, intro to chemistry, chem one, chem two, biochem, organic chem, blah, 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 blah. Um, all of that, we were talking about all of that. And the one of the very, very, very first things they told me was chemistry is a weed out class. So about 60% of you guys are either going to drop or change your major or flunk class. And I was like, what <laughs> i first off was super offended i was like people like all of these people are here because they want to be here they came here because they're excited to go into a profession where they get to help people and you are going to shut them down by telling them that um they're going to get weeded out or fail or basically not be good enough and this class is going to decide who's good enough and who's not so that super did not sit well with me immediately i was not happy about it and I'm, i still don't think that's okay i think it's wrong that that is the way that it is approached to a lot of people um so 
that that was my first um, taste of that there and I should have known that that atmosphere was not gonna be for me because I do not support putting people down at all like that um, and so that was one of the very first things that I was told and so first off I was offended second off my pride was like oh no 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 you don't know me <laughs> like you you must be talking about these people who just like somehow got in here like just slid in and never studied before like I'm a studier I do my work I am very on top of it I'm gonna be a doctor you don't know me and so that just kind of laid the framework for the rest of this story and how I kind of just had to be okay with learning that you know what it is okay to be weeded out it is okay to fail because a failure does not mean that you are not enough it just means that you are more than enough somewhere else and this was just not for you and so that is what I really learned throughout this whole journey but that was the very first experience that when I think of coming into UF that is the first thing that I think of that I was told coming in I started UF in the summer B semester which is a couple weeks before the fall semester and it is like a mini semester um, just to either get classes out of the way really fast or for those freshmen to start getting acclimated before the fall semester actually begins. And so I took intro to chemistry along with a couple other courses during that summer. And wow, oh wow, did it hit me like a ton of bricks. Um, I was really good at chemistry in high school. In high school, I literally pretty sure I got like a 99% in chemistry when I took it in high school. And mind you, I was doing AP and DE and all that stuff. And when I got to college, I don't know what happened, but it was not the same experience. And I very much was struggling and failing and not doing well at all. Um, no matter how hard I tried, like I was not a partier. Your girl was not out getting wild on weekday nights or anything like that like literally I was in the tutoring center in the library in the basement of my dorm studying and trying new things and buying study packets and um, study edge and all of that stuff um, to try and understand why I could not get this when literally two years ago I took chemistry in high school and I literally got hundreds on like practically everything and so no matter how hard I tried I simply was not able to get it and so this was a really harsh introduction into college life for me thankfully the story does get better and it does not end there you know it just didn't suck the whole time i was struggling really hard because i my so much of my identity was in my academics and who i was as a student because i had been a student for so long and being a good student and the smart girl and um you know like every with all these expectations you place on yourself my identity was very strongly rooted in who i was as a student as an intellectual in my academics and so pretty much everything i knew about myself um being smart and wanting to go to medical school i literally saw those dreams slipping away within weeks as i grappled trying to get through this course by the grace of God, I somehow managed to pass it enough to go into Chem 1. When the fall came around, I was excited to get started afresh all over again. You know, new semester always feels like it's a new time to start over and get it all together. And I was excited because I knew that I really wanted to join a sorority. Um, I was very back and forth about it because it was very expensive. And so I couldn't really justify actually going through with it. But I had been reached out to by a girl who was an officer of a Christian sorority at the University of Florida and so they were a much cheaper option and I knew that my ideals would match a lot more with them um, just because I was still a little iffy on what sorority life was like and so ultimately I decided to not do panhellenic sorority recruitment and I went with the Christian sorority instead and I was really excited about this because my roommate at the time was also like oh I don't think that the sorority life is for me but she was willing to try the Christian sorority so I had somebody to go through it with as well. And so that was the fall semester. This fall semester was the semester that my boyfriend at the time also um, began college with me. So he was also going to the University of Florida and it just felt like a fresh start. It felt like, okay, that was a really sucky start, but we're gonna try this again. What do we know? Once again, this semester, school was really, really tough. I was going to all the tutoring centers, doing all the study edge packets, buying all of the smoke-in notes and trying to learn as much as I could, doing all of my homework, my assignments were always done and yet I could not get it and it was really hard because I had friends obviously when you're in the tutoring center so much and you have people who you're living in a dorm with people who are also pursuing their degree you have people in classes and they're doing just fine and so I'm like 
when the heck did I become like the dumb person, <laughs> you know? And um, which is not true when it's not true about myself or anybody, you know? But that is what I was feeling because in the past I was so prideful on my intelligence and my smarts that when I was struggling, I was like, who the heck am I? Like, what is happening? This is so weird. And so it was a really, really tough struggle. And so that semester, was really difficult for me because one um i was failing my classes no matter how hard i tried i was just not able to get it so i was really really struggling in school my scholarships depended on my performance in my classes and so i was afraid of losing my scholarships and then on top of struggling academically, I was also struggling with that relationship I was in because I had just joined this Christian sorority who was such a major blessing throughout my entire college experience. And I'll probably talk about it over and over again throughout this whole video about how it was such a blessing to me. And it was Theta Alpha at UF. If any of you are new and wanting to go check it out, I could not encourage it enough. Um, but I had just joined a sorority and this is my first time really meeting people and women who were truly on fire for God and truly like had a relationship with God. Like this was my first time really seeing people who met with God on a daily basis and like had quiet time with him every single day and truly had a relationship with the Lord and I never experienced seeing that before and so it was so new and I wanted that and it was also my first time seeing people in relationships that were really focused on honoring God and seeing all of this i was like i want that and so i was really encouraged to go after that and have a life like that um and i really wanted to pursue that wholeheartedly and when i went to retreat so every semester my sorority had a retreat where we would go off to some cabin in the woods or something like that and it would be a fun weekend but also a weekend just like for sisterhood and getting to connect with god and just like disconnect from the world for a little bit and my very first retreat we had an old sister so an alum an alumna an alumni whatever you want to call it i can never figure out which one it is um we had an alumni i'm gonna say come and speak at the retreat and do like mini mini messages um throughout the retreat and she was telling us about her experience at theta alpha she was also telling us about how she met her husband and she was telling us how she was reading the book when god writes your love story at this point i was in a relationship and because i was seeing what it was like for all of these people who were in these like godly relationships where they were both encouraging each other to pursue the lord i knew in my heart that i was not meant to be in this relationship and i knew that it was pushing me away from god when this entire group of people are like trying to encourage me and push me towards it and they were encouraging me so it was like I had two areas of my life like one was pushing me away from the Lord and one was trying to push me towards it and I knew that I had that kind of pulling me back and so when I heard about this book I was like okay I really want to read this um and so I read this book and well I was starting to read this book but I I've never been the best at being consistent in reading books until recently recently we're getting somewhere <laughs> we are getting somewhere about that but um I was sort of slowly starting to read the book but I kind of like neglected it at one point and so it got to a point where my pride was being tackled down like God was like squashing my pride when it came to my pride in my academics and who I thought I was and really trying to separate me from identifying myself with who I was academically and really trying to re-identify me as no your identity is you are mine and you are my child and you are loved by me and that is the only identity you need and so that separation was really starting to happen and it was a really big struggle um and so i was really struggling there and then i was also struggling with um pride makes you not be able to really see um the way that you fault and the way that you fall short but it really highlights how other people fall short and so during this time as well you meet so many different people in college um a friend of mine at the time she was I found myself judging her for doing things with her boyfriend that she wasn't really supposed to and I didn't even realize that my pride had blinded me so much that I didn't realize like 
I'm not exactly honoring God in my relationship either, you know? And I was so blind to that and to the point where it just went a little too far. And then it was very clear to me immediately, like, this is wrong. I am not supposed to be in this relationship. Like, I need to get out of this. And this on top of my academics and then on top of my two best friends at the time were back at my high school and they were not talking to each other. So I felt like I couldn't talk to either of them because, um, they were arguing and I was just like afraid of that conflict and then I felt like I couldn't talk to my new friends from my sorority because to me I had never met I had never had like Christian friends or I never had that kind of godly community so I didn't realize the freedom that came with being vulnerable with people and we hadn't really had those conversations yet so I didn't feel comfortable talking to them I was trying to avoid <laughs> coming home um because of everything going on with my parents getting divorced and then um the only comfortable person I was comfortable talking to about anything was my boyfriend at the time and all of a sudden I was not comfortable talking to him. And so really the only person I was comfortable with talking to at this time anymore, I was the only thing I was left to do was talk to God about it. The only place I could turn really was to Jesus because I wasn't comfortable talking to any of the people that I should have been and I felt like my mess in my life right now was too much to bring it to these new friends who I had met who are my sisters in Christ um, because at the time I didn't realize the power that vulnerability has and all it takes is one person to be vulnerable and um, bring those messy topics and bring your burdens and see the power that happens in community when just one person does that. I hadn't experienced that yet. So really the only place I could turn to was God. And so at this, I reopened that When God Writes Your Love Story book. And what I found to be so amazing about the moment when I opened that book again was I came across a chapter in the book and I could not recommend this book enough to anyone, whether you're in a relationship or not in a relationship. It's a little cheesy, just a little bit, but the point gets across really powerfully. And, um, the book is told in the perspective of a husband and wife before they had met each other and when they had met each other. And I was reading from the perspective of the husband and the husband basically was giving an analogy of yourself being like a ship. And he was saying, yeah, God, you can captain my ship. Like he, when he gave his life to Jesus, he was like, yeah, you can, you can take the steering wheel, sure. But really, he was like, but there were a couple of rooms in that ship that I was not cool with God taking over. And so there was like the room with my pride. There was the room with my love life. There was the room with my future. There was the room with my career and my relationships and all of that. And some of them, he was like, oh yeah, you can, you can take that room, but you can't take this one. And so reading this, he was telling, um, in the book, he's telling us about how um, he really needed, God kept knocking on those doors that he wouldn't open and let him take over. And he was like, no, no, I need this one too. I can't just have the sticker wheel, I need the whole ship. And it, the book, this chapter was very much about like God knocking on all those doors until he eventually like just gave himself over to God and was like, listen, I want what you want and you can take all of me. And, um, it wasn't until reading this that I had realized in myself that I was fighting with God and wrestling with God for certain areas of my life that I shouldn't have had to because there's so much better in his hands anyways. And so um, at this point when I was reading the book, I was in my dorm room alone and my roommate wasn't there. I can't even remember where she was at this point. Um, I know Gator Nights were a big thing when I was a freshman and they're super cool. Don't let anybody tell you they're not cool. If you go to UF, go to Gator Nights, they're fun. You get free stuff. Um, but I don't think I had gone that night because I just wasn't feeling well because there was just a lot going on. And I was reading this and I was, it was apparent to me that I was in a very similar situation and I felt like God was like pounding on those doors saying, no, I need this one too. Like, trust me, you're going to be so much better off if you open this door and let me come in. Um, and it was in that moment where I consider that to be the moment where I truly gave my life to Jesus. And I was like, yes, you can have it. You can open this door. I am yours. You can have my academics. You can have my relationship. You can have my friendships and my family and my career and all this. And that was the first moment where I really realized, like, okay, I need to stop 
fighting with God for the pen of my life and give it to him because he writes a way better story than I can and he can write the story of my life better than I ever could and that was kind of what the book was about when I was reading it that day and I was like wow did I need that and like I was like sobbing in my my twin XL dorm room bed <laughs> um and so that is the moment that I really consider that is the moment where I truly feel like I met Jesus and that is when I gave my life to him and I, I consider that when I truly got saved because that's when I gave it over and I just said here take me I'm yours have it all and so that is the moment that that happened but it doesn't like magically the world get better <laughs> immediately after because yes that decision happens but it wasn't until I started taking that initial decision and letting Jesus lead in every subsequent decision that really I started to see change happen and so um, after that moment um, with Jesus I was like okay I knew that the next step was my relationship I knew that I needed to get out of this relationship I knew it was not honoring God I knew it was not part of the plan and I knew that it was not honoring me and so I knew I needed to to end that but when this person was the only person that I was really comfortable with talking about anything for a really long time and the only person that from my home that was here with me it's really hard to end things when this is like like your only, not your only friend, but it's just like when you have someone who you're very comfortable with because you've known them for so long and you're in this new place and they're like the only attachment to what you knew, um, it's hard to get rid of. But I did not, I, I knew at this point that God was calling me to move away from that and move away from the past and move forward without any attachments. And I knew that when he, since he was calling me to follow him, I needed to get rid of anything that was going to bring lack. And so it did not happen immediately, but eventually, um, I did end that relationship and I was able to move out of that and I really started to see so much freedom and growth in my faith because I didn't really have that lack and I was really able to spend more time with these people and the sisterhood that was pushing me towards following the Lord. So that was towards the end of the semester and I had dropped chemistry because I was just not doing well and I did not want to have a fail on my record and then I had not done well in biology and I didn't really do well in my other classes and while I had followed um Jesus's lead on getting out of that relationship I still wasn't totally listening and letting him take over when it came to my academics and my career and I was still very stuck on how can I make being a doctor happen how can I make it happen because to me this was that was all I had dreamt of my entire life. Like that was my future. And so when you have dreamed of this future your entire life and now you are literally watching it crumble in front of you and everybody is like, no, you're not gonna get into med school if you failed chemistry, like come on, you know? Or um, you are told from the beginning, oh, 60% of you are gonna get weeded out. Um, and then you find yourself being the person who's weeded out when you were like, that's not me, that's not who I am. Um, then, it was a really dark period of my life because I was in this new place, felt very alone, and I had just gotten out of this relationship that made me feel like I wasn't totally alone. And because so much of my identity and my thought of what my future was was in my academics, it all started to look like what the heck even is my future? I don't even have a future if I don't do this. Like this is the only option. So I felt very stuck and it was very dark time because I felt so hopeless without any direction or vision for what was to come so I really I was really having a serious identity problem and I was seriously having a um serious problem with hope for the future and at this point I just knew like I was crying all the time <laughs> like all the time and I was probably needed some mental help at that point too but um but I was not honest enough with myself to admit that I needed any sort of help or anything like that even though that would have been super helpful so the whole point of this story which there is still more to it but I just did want to stop here is when you come to college you're going to come in with one idea of who you are and what you want to do and what your plan is and that is great and keep like keep pursuing those dreams if they are hot on your heart but know that what you do in your career is not who you are and your identity is not meant to be placed in something that is so fleeting and wavering um 
and your identity is so much placed in who the Lord says about you. Um, and it is so okay to ask for help and be honest about how you are feeling and how you feel about yourself um and at this point like i was literally calling my mom like every day like crying and being like i can't believe i'm so stupid blah 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 and all this stuff and so if you're feeling that way or you ever do feel that way when you get to college or if you felt that way before know that you are not stupid <laughs> and know that you are not less than or unworthy or just the one who got weeded out and tossed away and your future is over um it's a very easy to feel that way in college and that's why you see so many terrible um stories of people who commit suicide in college and all this stuff because it's so easy to feel when you're in a place that it's literally all about planning for your future to feel that when something does not go according to plan your future is done and over and i just want you to know that that's so not true and so if you are struggling in college especially right now because right now i can't even imagine how much worse that would be um if you're struggling with that, know that what you do is not who you are and you have so much more purpose beyond what you're going to school for and what your major is. So I encourage you, if you are struggling with that, please go get help. There are plenty of student um, therapy and mental health centers and all of that and like they are available to you, take them. Um, I wish I did. So with that, the next semester, I was still fighting over my career. I was like, no, I'm going to be a doctor. Trust me. <laughs> like a little psycho about it. Like, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a doctor. Like holding very tight to that. Even though I had just said, like, Jesus, you can have it all. It's not really until you let him lead in all of those little decisions that you can really see the power of what he can do. And so the next semester, I enrolled again for Cam 1 once again and i had enrolled for bio two and all the other courses that i had to do and once again what do you know i sucked again i kept not doing well um thankfully i was always scraping by just enough to keep my scholarships because the lord is good and faithful and thankfully i was able to keep that not by my own will by his completely um but that second semester, I really felt a call in my heart to lead in my sorority. I wanted some sort of position. I wanted to serve this sorority in some way because of all that it gave me. I just, I really wanted to pour back into it. And so I was on the socials committee in the fall, um, which is like building relationships with other Greek organizations or Christian Greek organizations. And I knew that I wanted to serve. And so chair applications came out and I applied to be the socials chair for my sorority and this was my first experience at seeing people trust me um, and really see potential in me to do something, something that I had never seen in myself before and so people really saw potential in me and saw talent in me in um, graphic design and creating all of these flyers and um, banners and stuff like that to promote these socials to the different people in these different organizations as well as my organization and um, organizing these events and communicating with all of these different people and mind you this was not inhibiting on my academics in any way like it was not that big of a commitment but it was my first experience at seeing people see potential in me in something in that in a more creative capacity and so that was my first exposure to that and this is also the first time that I met Robert who is now my fiance um, which definitely has a part to play in this testimony and the story of my college experience but I had actually met him because we had to plan a social together and at that point I had just gotten out of that last relationship and something I forgot to tell you guys about that one is when I had told Jesus like you can have it all like take every room in the ship like every room of the Adriana ship you can have it um while I still grappled with some of them um I one of them was relationships obviously because that was what led me to get out of that last relationship but in the book the husband who was writing was saying that he told God that the next woman he dated was going to be his wife. He is like, I am not just dating to date anymore. I am just not dating to have fun. The next person I date is going to be my wife. And I will be confident when I step into that, um, that that is the situation. And so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do the same thing because in high school I was just dating to date. I'm like, whatever. Like I truly was not taking it seriously at all. 
wasn't that big of a deal to me it was just having fun like no big deal um later i realized okay actually that is a big deal um which i think is a totally different video but at this point i was like no i'm not doing that i I want to pursue God completely and I don't want anything holding me back so I am not dating unless I know that is my husband um, and so I didn't I had met him and it totally went right over my head never really thought about it again until later obviously um, but I just did want to note that that during that experience of being social share was when I met him so I went through that whole semester again wasn't that great thankfully my social life was a lot better and I felt a lot less alone because I had really um, made amazing friendships in that sorority and so towards the end of the year mind you again I failed chemistry this time this time I finally officially failed chemistry um, despite trying because you only get two drops and I dropped biology because I could not do it either and if just a thought like I'm thinking about freshman Adriana if she heard you telling if she heard me telling you guys <laughs> um that I failed chemistry and biology and dropped chemistry and dro I'm gonna drop biology one more time we haven't gotten there but <laughs> just you wait um she would die because I was not that person like you don't fail people don't need to know that you know and so this is just it's just amazing how God can like just put that away and like my identity is not in that anymore like I failed chemistry and I dropped it twice so but it's in the past but and I feel no condemnation by that at all anymore but so that semester failed chemistry dropped by failed chemistry oh and I failed biology I think actually I did poorly um again um and so the summer rolls around and the summer comes and I am living by myself now so I was out of the dorms I was in an apartment thankfully I was sharing the apartment with um, a girl who I had met in Theta Alpha who is now one of my very best friends and my matron of honor so I was living with her that summer and I was also living with someone who was the president of one of the panhellenic sororities on campus and mind you I had always had an interest in joining one of those sororities um, for multiple reasons and I, a friend of mine who was also in my, my current Theta Alpha Christian sorority, um, she was really considering rushing, which is like going through the recruitment process for Panhellenic sororities as well. So I was like, oh man, I kind of really want to try that. And this was not anything at Theta Alpha. I love Theta Alpha with all my heart, but I was super curious about what was on the other side and I didn't want to leave college without any, um, with any regrets. You know, I just wanted to try to try it. And so, mind you, at this point, I was done being social chair and I was actually recently accepted again to be recruitment chair for Theta Alpha Rush. And so I could not participate in Panhellenic recruitment and be recruitment chair for Theta Alpha at that point. So people had seen that potential in me to be recruitment chair. I had done a lot at this point as recruitment chair. Um, I had recruited so many girls, I was in so many communication with so many girls, and I had, I was trusted with this big role, and I had left to go through Panhellenic recruitment. This decision did not sit well with a couple of my friends at the time, and I see that now, um, especially because it was irresponsible to leave a position um, that I had been trusted with. But I did it anyways. And so during that summer, I got my very first job at Baby Gator, which is a um, daycare for faculty and staff, I believe, at the University of Florida. And this was another attempt of mine at one, making money because of course you need money for life. And then also, um, this was an attempt at really trying to redeem myself in the eyes of med schools or whatever route I decided to take at this point because I was like, who the heck knows what's gonna happen. And so this is me just trying to be like, okay, I can, I will have experience. I've already volunteered at the hospitals here because I was doing that too, um, which was not fun. <laughs> I should have known when I had done my first volunteer shift in the hospital, it was not fun. The most exciting thing that happened was when I volunteered in the ER and someone with a gunshot wound came in and that was about it. So that was the most exciting thing that ever happened when I volunteered at the hospital. And the rest of that was not exciting. I should have known it was not for me. But I was like, okay, I already have volunteering under my belt. I might as well get some sort of like patient contact or just showing that I know how to care for people, especially if I want to go into obstetrics and gynecology. Like I should have some experience with babies. So I worked at Baby Gator and I did that that summer. And eventually my roommate for the summer had left because she only did one portion of the summer. And I was alone for a couple of weeks that summer. 
I was taking chemistry again that summer and by the grace of God and a very wonderful study partner named Zoe, who is now my maid of honor, um, I passed chemistry with a B. So we finally passed chemistry and I was like, there is hope in the world after all. <laughs> there is hope. And um, I dropped biology, but anyways, I passed chemistry, that's all that matters. <laughs> and I think that was more of a personal thing. God was just like, let me just give you that one because I passed literally with the exact percentage I needed to keep my scholarship. Like exactly, like I li like when I tell you the exact point percent, I got exactly what I needed to keep my scholarships. That was definitely the Lord. Um, and then I think he was also just like, here, just feel better. <laughs> and I was like, thank you. And it did make me feel loads better. I like sobbed and sobbed and sobbed when I saw that I passed. And, um, that semester, so that summer semester when I was by myself, I was like, okay, I don't think that the pre-med route is for me anymore. Um, at this point, this is where I was finally starting to give into the idea of maybe this isn't for me. Not that I got weeded out, not that I wasn't enough, not that I wasn't smart enough, not that I'm a failure. Maybe I was just, this is not the route he wants me to take. So this is where I started to finally listen to God a little bit and just kind of let go of that pen just a little bit and let him write the story rather than me like trying to write it myself and this is where I was like okay I'm gonna try something else maybe we'll do nursing again I don't know why I thought that I was gonna like that um but I just wanted something to do with medicine because I was like I can still be a nurse midwife if I'm a nurse because that's what I wanted to do in the end and so I switched my major from health science to APK which is applied physiology and kinesiology it is a mouthful um but it's just like another bones and body major that's what i'm gonna say there but if zoe heard me say that she would be like what because she actually graduated with her degree in that and so there's a lot more than that but um switched my major to apk and this was so much better first off a million times better so when the fall semester has started again now going into my second year of college i was now living in a new apartment with two new roommates who i love with my whole entire heart the new fall semester had started and i was about to rush and go through panhellenic recruitment and so this was before school even started it happened like right before the first day of school and it was a great experience like i genuinely enjoy the recruitment process which i know a lot of people are like what because most people like hate going through us but i really enjoyed it because once again i this whole experience in college was just me realizing bits and pieces of myself that i had always ignored because i was so hyper focused on being a doctor that the only things about myself that I wanted to entertain were things that fit into the doctor mold and anything else I was just like get rid of it I don't even care I don't even care to pay attention to it and so now that I was kind of trying to like put down my pride and kind of give God more control I was able to realize like wait a second I am good at other things and what I loved about the recruitment process was I am naturally a strategic person and so I kind of played it like a game and I did a lot of my research on a lot of the girls, a lot of the sororities, and I came in basically with like a battle strategy about how I was going to communicate my way through this and get through the whole process. If you've never heard of the recruitment process for um, sororities, it is very interesting and very complex, but I thought it was a lot of fun <laughs> because I felt like I was just strategizing my way through the whole thing. So I had made it through the whole panhellenic recruitment process. And if you don't know anything about it, um, basically there's multiple rounds of the process. And at the end of each round, you rank which house or sorority you would like to be in the most to least. And your list will shift throughout the whole process because um, while you are ranking them, they are also ranking the girls and saying, we want her the most and we want her the least, blah, 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 blah. And it sounds really harsh, but it's, it's really not as harsh well, in my experience it was not very harsh i know people have horror stories so i had gone through the whole process and at the end i had gotten a bid to, into a sorority but it was my least favorite house from my top three so at the end you're able to rank three houses mind you i liked all of them throughout the whole process but there was one i really 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 wanted to get into and one i was like okay and then i was just like am okay. And I had gotten to that last one, nothing bad to say about any of them either. Like when I say that they were my last one, I mean like I just personally felt like I wasn't the best fit for them, but I know that a lot of people have a lot of negative things to say about um, sorority recruitment and their experiences in that, and everybody has their own experience. And so I'm sure that 
whatever you feel, I'm sure it's very valid. Um, but in my experience, I was treated with the utmost kindness and respect and courtesy. And so I had a, I had a really good experience and I have nothing to say negatively about any of the women that I encountered or the experience at all. But I accepted the bid and I went to the bid day party and the moment, I tell you the moment I ran out of the bus, ran to the house, um, I knew in my soul, I was like, ooh, this was a bad idea. Like immediately, this thing that I was wanting to do from literally before I got even got into college, um, and then like kind of forgot about and then was excited about all over again and like went into it full force and went through the whole process. The moment I landed on the grass of that house, I was like, Mm, this isn't it. This is not right. This is not okay. This is not good. And it was nothing to do with the sorority and everything to do with, um, it was just not for me. I knew in my heart immediately it's not where the Lord wanted me. And I immediately felt instant regret. I was like, oh my God, I left Theta Alpha for this. And again, nothing bad on them. But when you come from a community of women who are encouraging you to pursue the Lord and, um, relationship with him and a life that honors him and um because when you pursue the lord like you are not limited you are freed and there are so much blessing that comes when you pursue the lord and i saw that and i knew it and i knew the fruit that came from those relationships that when i got here i was like i'm not gonna find that here like i just knew immediately and i was crying about it because i was like oh my goodness i wanted this so bad and i really wanted this to work and so I was really torn up about it. And again, I was just reminded once again, like, okay, this experience is not wasted. This was a good experience, but you're just not meant to be here. This is not part of the plan for you. So I tried it out for a little while. I went to a couple of the lunches. I went to the first chapter meeting and I was like, okay, this just isn't for me. I know that this isn't for me. So I reached out to some of the officers at Theta Alpha and I was just like, this is not for me. I thought it was, but it isn't. I tried it. I'm glad I tried it, but I want to come back really bad. I know that I've already missed some requirements, but can I please come back? And by the grace of God, they let me come back. And I was welcomed with open arms back into the sorority, back into our sisterhood. So the semester had now officially begun. I was back at the Alpha. I had gone through all that experience and I am in this new major and things are looking better. I'm in this new apartment with these people that I love. I just got in a little who I was so excited about. Um, and I was making new friends off like people who are still involved in my life now. And I knew that things are finally moving in the right direction. And all it took was for me to just kind of like stop trying to control everything and just let God lead and listen to him. Um, and every little decision that I made that was listening to God, um, things got easier and things got better and things I could start to see how he was working things out and knitting the story together. And so that semester I was in the, um, APK major looking to be a nurse. I had gone through an anatomy and somehow passed anatomy pretty well. Um, and I was finally passing my classes. I was finally doing well. I was finally getting on the right track. But even though things seemed to be working out with my eyes, I knew in my heart, I was like, okay, this still doesn't feel totally right. Like something still doesn't feel like a good fit. Like I still feel like I'm a puzzle piece trying to shove myself in the wrong like slot, you know? And earlier that year, right before the summer had started, I had received my first camera and my dad had bought me the camera for my birthday for whatever reason. I don't even remember why anymore. I knew I wanted a camera for my birthday. I just did. Um, and I think it's because I had a lot of ideas for being recruitment chair for Theta Alpha. And I was like, I need a camera to make this happen. Like we need to have our social media amped up like all of these other like top notch authorities so that we can show accurately just how amazing our sisterhood is. Cause I've experienced it. And now I want to show it to all these new girls. Um, and at that time I knew I wanted a camera. And so my dad had blessed me with a camera for my birthday. And as I was using it, even though I ended up stopping being recruitment chair and went on to do that, um, I really started to learn how to use this camera and I was really excited about it. And I was always been a big Disney fan. And so I would go to Disney and I would take pictures at Disney. And this is when I really started to like, I don't know, like take pictures for Instagram and get to know people on Instagram. And at this point I was really following a lot of Disney bloggers and YouTubers 
and again never thought about it but now because i was always super hyper focused on what i wanted my life to look like and i was so trying to control it that i was like ignoring and blind to all of these things that interested me that were going right past me and so now i was in a point where i was like okay i need to stop trying to fit myself into a mold that was not meant for me i told god that i was going to let him control it so i need to let him have it I, was, I told him he could have my life. I need to let him have it and just stop trying to fight for it. And so finally I started to let myself open up and I was like, okay, this is not for me. I really want a life like these people. And so the whole semester had come and gone and it was a great semester. I finally was doing good in my classes. Like I was actually not failing. Who would have thought? But the end of the semester came and I was back at home for winter break and something just didn't feel right. I was sitting at the counter of our old house and I knew, I was like, I'm still trying to fit myself into a mold that was not meant for me. That's what I feel like because I'm forcing myself to try and fit into something that wasn't meant for me. And I knew this because my roommate Zoe, um, she, like, I could see the passion she had for what she did and I was like, I don't have that. Like, I don't have what you have about what we're both doing. We were both the exact same major and I was like, mm, I don't feel the same way about that. And I'm like, I don't think I am meant for this. And this was when I was finally like, I wasn't failing. It wasn't that I was failing. It wasn't that I was being weeded out or not smart enough. It was just, I don't think I was meant for this. And so I, I was telling myself, if I told God that he could have all of me, that I need to give it all. And I need to be open, open-minded to whatever he has in store and just consider that he might actually know more than I do about this whole life thing, believe it or not. And so I was sitting at the countertop and I was looking at my laptop and I was like, okay, I really love this girl on Instagram. I really love this girl on YouTube and I really love this person and I love following their life so much what do they do like i just wanted to know what they did and i was just like what do they do like how do they live this life and obviously i knew that nobody's life was perfect like i'm not one to fall into the trap of thinking that instagram life is real life but i knew that just from following them enough i was like i want to know what you do professionally because i want to do that too and so I would looked it up and I stalked the heck out of these people, <laughs> like stalked. And I was looking everybody up on LinkedIn and everybody, literally everyone I found was either a public relations, um, had gotten a degree in public relations, or they had gotten a degree from some form of journalism or communications college. And I was like, okay. And I was like, that's very different. <laughs> I don't know anything about that. But when I started doing some research on it, it was everything I had read about public relations and everything I had read about marketing and everything I'd read about the um, majors in the journalism college. I was like, wait a second, I think I'd be really good at this. And it's because I finally started like let myself sit down and think about, okay, I have been trusted with these different positions in Theta Alpha with zero experience. I have they they had no need to give me a socials chair they had no need to give me a recruitment chair they had no need to let me design all these things or take all these pictures or do all these things and organize these things and so like there was no reason they had i had no experience and nothing to show them i did not work for anything to make them think that i could do that but they saw potential in me and they saw talent in me that i was ignoring because i was so hyper focused somewhere else that I actually think I might be good at this stuff if I actually let myself try to be good at something else that wasn't what I wanted to be good at so desperately. And so I just ripped off the band-aid and I said, all right, we're just gonna change it completely. I have no idea what this has in store, but we're just going to change, do a complete 180. And I was like, God, I think I'm supposed to try this because I was like super like hyper focusing on these people for a while and I'm like okay this has to be for a reason and so finally I was like I think I'm just gonna do this and I had consulted my friends and I had consulted my mom and I was like I think this I I have potential here I think there's an opportunity here and so I went and they let me change my major and then I became a public relations major and then started 2018. And so all of that was just my freshman year completely and then half of my sophomore year. And so 2018 starts, I come back to school and I have a completely different schedule than I've ever seen in my life. I had like intro to PR and I had a multimedia writing class and all this stuff. And I was like, 
what is this? <laughs> like, I don't even know what this is. What is this world? And I was also working at an elementary school at this time. Um, the last semester I'd worked at a library along with Baby Gator and I had quit the library job because I was like, this ain't for me. Um, I'm just not someone who can sit uh, and that be it for a long period of time. And so I was like, this isn't for me. And I was very stressed about quitting that job, but I did it. And then at Baby Gator, I had left to start at this new job in elementary school, which was the biggest blessing. If you are in college, I strongly, and you're looking for a job and you enjoy working with children, because please don't work with children if you don't enjoy working with children. Um, don't make their lives miserable. Um, I highly, highly, highly suggest working um, with the extended day or after school care program at your um, local school system because one, they're always looking for people and two, it is just such a fruitful time and you get to know those children, you get to really love them. And I absolutely love that job. And I only say this because when I came into Baby Gator before, I know this story is super all over the place, but when I came into Baby Gator, I came in thinking that this was gonna better me and better my chances at getting to med school or doing some sort of medical thing. Mind you, I had now completely changed my direction, but I still needed a job, and so I wanted to work with children, and I had the experience now, even though that wasn't my intention for that job at the beginning, God knew that I was going to be wanting to get this job, and that was going to prepare me for it. And so I got this job, it was the biggest blessing, and it'll come back later. But 2018 I started, I had this job, and I had this entirely new set class schedule, and I was going through it, and I was finally thriving like I knew immediately the first day of class when I went to my first intro to PR class and when I sat down for multimedia writing I was like this is what I'm supposed to be doing like immediately I knew and I just felt so much peace in my soul like I am doing what I am supposed to be doing like I'm finally not fighting to shove myself into some other puzzle slot like I'm finally in the right mold for my puzzle piece like I felt like I fit there just like the very first lecture I was like I actually want to be here <laughs> and then just sitting down because my multimedia writing class was online I was like I don't hate my life <laughs> what a what a world and um so immediately I was reaffirmed that I was doing the right thing and at this point is where I started my blog and I had first started my website um because I just wanted I just wanted to dive in and I wanted to do stuff and I just wanted to make stuff um because I finally let myself do it and that February I actually re-met Robert so we he had re reached out to me and we will go over a relationship story with you at some point um but in short we had rekindled and we had started talking with each other again but i was still very aware of that promise i made to god that i was not going to date any guy just to date i was going to date him if he was my husband and that was it so fast forward throughout our whole relationship and we had gone to church together one night and um the pastor pastor mike because i went to greenhouse church um in gainesville he was giving a sermon and during the sermon he basically spelled out my entire relationship history to me within the sermon and he was saying things like just basically spelled it out for me and he was like you're probably sitting there and you're thinking oh my goodness this is so awkward this is my first time coming to church with this person my first time bringing them here why'd you have to go over this today oh my goodness like this is so awkward we haven't even had this conversation yet and that is exactly what I was thinking because I was like, oh my god, this is so awkward. Like, I haven't even gone through the whole relationship talk with him yet of, like, my previous relationships. And, like, why would you talk about this? And he literally said all those words and he said, but even though you're thinking that, I'm going to tell you right now that this is going to be the wisest man you have ever had, you have ever met in all of this stuff. And I was just like, hello, <laughs> are you in my head? And that was such clear affirmation for me because Robert had always been so intentional throughout our like dating period. Um, I mean, we're still dating, you're supposed to date forever, but like before we were like a thing, um, he had been very intentional and so that was just like affirmation for me and that night he asked me to be his girlfriend and I had known, I was like, okay, I feel I this sprung on me, but that was clearly the Lord speaking through him. And so I'm going to say yes to this and to see where this leads. And so we know where that led now. Hello. But again, even immediately after we got into that relationship, he was super intentional 
one of my favorite things to talk about is how literally the night that he asked me to be his girlfriend he told me that the next time we saw each other um he wanted us to write letters to each other that were just like things that the other person should know about the other person because we're still getting to know each other really like you don't just know everything about somebody the moment you start dating um and it was like it was very intentional it was just like i just want who had us both write a letter about like things the other person should know kind of like a warning label for the other person just being totally vulnerable with them and very intentional moving like from the beginning and that was just such affirmation for me like okay there's something here and so there was of course but that all happened there and that i just think how amazing is it that that happened because i told god like hey I am only doing this if you say that is my husband and it's amazing how when you let him come in and you let him take over he will speak and he spoke and I knew and I was like okay heard I will see where this leads and I will let you take care of it and that's exactly what he did so that happened in February of 2018 and we moved on throughout the semester the semester was fabulous it was great and that um, at the end of that semester, right before the summertime, I had been accepted to be Theta Alpha's webmaster. And the webmaster is the person for Theta Alpha who does all the social media and the website stuff and all that good stuff. And so, again, just reaffirming, like, these things in me that I had not seen potential in myself before because I was looking somewhere else, you know? So, the whole semester had gone great and this is where the story just kind of starts to wrap up and we start to see like how good God is if you haven't already. And so summer goes by then the fall came around and I did another internship with the UF Center for Arts and Medicine and there was also really exploring um, social media and photography and videography and stuff like that. Um, again, doing good in my classes. Finally, again, really just the Lord proving like this is where you're meant to be. Like I'm going to get you through this because this is where I want you. Um, and then again, living with my same roommates, loving them and just having a great time. And this semester, and this was fall of 2018 it's it's amazing how a lot of times when people think like oh like when people say like oh god told me this or god spoke to me and this is and that like it's very easy to think like they mean in some supernatural way which i'm not going to put down i'm not one to limit god if god wants to speak to me supernaturally he will do it but let me tell you that God speaks in many, many ways. And sometimes he just speaks through his people and you have to be open-minded enough to listen because um, in fall 2018, it was right after Theta Alpha recruitment, multiple people, and I mean multiple people in Theta Alpha had come up to me asking me if I was going to apply for the Disney College program. And I was like, first off, I'm the Disney fan here. And I'm the Orlando native. How do I not know what this is? And also, where does everybody get this idea that I'm applying to Disney College from? Like, multiple people were asking me this. Never once had this ever crossed my mind because actually I had heard of it once before and I immediately said, no, I'm not doing that. I have to go to med school. I don't have the time to do that. Yes, that was that was the one and only time I'd eat it again cross my mind and it like came in and left never thought about it again Until I want to say at least five people in the exact same day, maybe within the same two-hour period um, Asked me this and I was like, where is this coming from? And so I was sitting with Robert at lunch because we were having lunch together that day and I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna apply to Disney college program. I was like this cannot be a coincidence that all of these people in Theta Alpha some of them are random who don't even know me like personally have asked me this so I'm like you know what, what can it hurt I'm just gonna try it who cares um and so literally in that exact same moment I applied I submitted my application and then immediately I got the web-based interview and then I did the, w the WBI is what it's called and then I got through it and then I was immediately offered a phone interview and I was like whoa <laughs> like this was all within like the same hour and I was like what just happened like how did this happen and so I scheduled the interview and everything and then I was like god is this what you want like I, I know I kind of like jumped the gun there but like is this like a thing like do you really want me to do this and the more and more and more that I thought about it the more and more I was like I'm really excited about it and suddenly I'm like okay if I've let myself open this window you know like if I'm letting God take over then like let's just try everything you know and at this point I had already gotten further 
in learning more about my career and learning more about all the opportunities for me and I was looking up to a lot of people who I had seen on social media and on YouTube and things like that who I knew and I'd seen how their career was going and I saw the opportunities for social media at Disney and the theme parks and I was like you know what I actually think I would really enjoy this um because this definitely seems like on my alley and I was like if I ever wanted to do social media with Disney what a great way to get my foot in the door so now I was like hmm like plotting and seeing how this could actually work out in my benefit and so I was like okay this could actually be a really great career move because I can start making connections at Disney and then when it comes time to getting into like a professional internship this might really work out for me if I did like the college program and so um Long story short, after a long, long semester of waiting and praying and hoping, I finally got into the program. Um, and that took a lot of, again, grappling with God, just trying to trust that he is good and he's going to work things out. And he eventually did. I ended up getting it um, because he led me to it. And I knew that it wasn't going to come back empty, but it took a long time, like months and months and months. I was even waitlisted. And then even past the final deadline, then was I got in. So he's, he's always up to something, guys. So I finally got in, I did the Disney college program, it was the biggest blessing. And what's amazing is that I got children's activities on my college program. And this is something, it's just another testimony of how good God is because again, Baby Gator is where I started working with children. Um, or actually I started before that when I was volunteering at a hospital in high school and I volunteered at a children's hospital. So that was on my resume for that. And then I had Baby Gator that was on my resume. Two things that I did for medical school that ended up never happening. And then my job at the elementary school and then my job at the education library which is that job that I was like this isn't for me and it's amazing how all of these things that I had no intention of ever using and all of these things that I had intention of using for a different purpose how God was like you may think that I, you have a purpose for this I have a purpose for this just you wait and see and all of those experiences came together and helped me get children's activities on the Disney college program that was such an amazing blessing it was such an amazing time and was just such a big part of my college experience and so um, after doing the DCP, I again had a summer off and then I started my YouTube channel when I did the Disney College program and I did YouTube throughout that entire experience and then I did it over the summer and then the fall came around and I had all of this experience in social media and with theme parks at this point that I applied for Universal. And again, after a long semester of waiting, um, I finally got that job too. So pretty much this is kind of where I'm gonna stop the whole college experience thing because at this point, um, I left college after the fall semester of 2019 because I took my last semester and I transferred to online to do my universal internship which catches it up to where we are today and so I finished college online and I transferred to UF online in the online public relations degree program so that is where we are now but the whole point of this whole video to say that there's so much power and you have so much freedom and you open the windows and open the door for god to come in and do beautiful things with your life when you let him come in and i was grappling and fighting and trying to control things for so long that i couldn't see what he was trying to do and it wasn't until i let go of the pen let him write my life story instead of me trying to write it and let him come into my life and stopped hyper focusing on the things that i wanted and just let myself be open-minded to the things that he wants because he created me he created all of this I think he knows what's best for me and it wasn't until I made decisions of letting him take control that I was able to see the beautiful things that he was able to do with my life and able to see how he knitted everything to a specific purpose um, and how everything had a purpose even when I had a different motive for it at the time he knew exactly how perfect it was going to match up and align in my life story to serve the next season the whole point of this video is really um, just to share my experience with you guys in my college experience and just because I know that I wish that I had heard someone talk about how they failed and it wasn't the end of the world and how they really sucked at something that they really really wanted 
but God had something better in store for them anyways and how it is so much better and so freeing to put that pride away throw it in the trash and approach people vulnerably and bring your mess and your burden and take them to people that you confide in and let it out with them because we are called to carry each other's burdens and that's what we're supposed to do as christians in community um is to carry each other's burdens and carry that with people so that you're not bogged down and feeling the weight of everything on you um and that it's okay to be honest and vulnerable and be different than what you expected of yourself um and really this is also just encouraging you guys like if you are struggling with control, um, because I know I'm someone who struggles with control and I struggle with um, things not turning out the way I expected them to turn out and um, really trying to like manipulate certain situations to work in my favor and I just want to give you some encouraging news that God is the creator of the universe and he created you and he created whatever thing you may want and whatever life you may think is ideal and i promise you he knows you so much better than yourself and he knows everything in your life is for a reason and for a purpose and you may have thought of it for one reason just the same way i thought of all those jobs are going to help me get into med school and really they helped me get into the disney college program and helped set me on that course and set me up for youtube because that's where that started you know but like the reason you see things and the reason you think things happen he has such a better reason and when you let him come into your life and you open all of those doors and you not only let him steer the ship of your life and be the captain of the ship but you let him have control over every single room in that ship and over your pride and your relationships and your interests and your hobbies and your career and your academics and all that stuff when you let him come in and take it all over you are freeing yourself and you are just saying you are letting him do what only he can do and i promise you that he is a much better writer of the story of your life than you could ever be and that is something that I have to remind myself every single day whenever I am faced with a waiting period or a trial or a season that is tougher or when things don't seem to work out my way I have to remember that I want to write my story because naturally the world tells you that yeah you should have control over your life you know and it's your life do what you want but let me tell you that God knows so much better than you do and he writes such a better story than the best of authors. And so I just, I encourage you in that and I just encourage you to let it all, give, just give him all of it and give him all of you because he knows what to do with you and he makes a beautiful story. And I, if you talk to me when I came into college, I could have never, I never in a million years would have told you where I am right now. And mind you, right now I am unemployed. <laughs> right now I am unemployed, but I am happy. I am so happy with the way my college experience turned out. I'm so thrilled with the degree I got. I'm amazed by the wonderful people he put in my life and all the experiences that I got to have. And while yes, right now I'm unemployed because the world is a little weird right now, I know that he is up to something else. And I know that it's just gonna be another testimony of how good he is in a couple months where I get to talk about what he's up to again and when I find out then. But I encourage you to trust in the Lord because he created you, he knows what to do with you, he created everything in this world and he knows where you are best fit. And so, yeah, vulnerability and humility and just trusting the Lord are my story. And I'm still working on it. It is not always easy. It is in my nature to do the opposite of all of those things. But every time I share this or I just remind myself of where we've been and where we've come to, I'm reminded of how amazing he is and how he can do so, so much good when you let him take over your life and you put away that pride and you put on some humility and you be vulnerable with people and how much good he can do in those situations. So that is my college experience and that is my testimony. And it is, he is still writing my testimony. He's still writing my story, but that is where we are right now. So um, I know that wasn't a ton of like college tips or anything like that. I really just kind of wanted to share with you some of my college experience and how it like 
came to be. Um, I do have a couple videos about college and I have a college um, playlist that you can watch with a couple tips and stuff like that. If you guys have questions about anything in this video, I'd be happy to do like a little Q&A about it um, because I have tons of college knowledge, especially when it comes to financial aid and jobs and federal work study and internships and stuff like that. So I'm happy to help you in any of that. If you have any questions, let me know about that. And I can do a more like career-based video, but this is more of a me as a person and how he worked in me through college. So yes, thank you guys so much. I love you guys. Thank you for hearing me out and just letting me share my heart with you and talk about how freaking cool God is and how amazing he is and how he works for our good always. So with that, Thank you guys, I love you, and I will see you in the next video.